All right, guys, here at the post office, finally sending this MSD box in. No line. What are the chances of that? Anyways, um, this is the previous MSD box I used to have that broke on me. I'm gonna send it in and hopefully get this bug worked out of the car. She ready for the Daytona 500 or what? So I was in the post office and everybody was looking at me all kind of weird. I didn't realize what they're looking at me for until I watched the video. I just made outside and saw I had a big old piece of dirt on my forehead. I'm Ryan, this is Trezian Racing. And like I just said, I sent the MSD box in that gave me some trouble in Stockton the first time I was there back in September. I've come to the conclusion that there's something that's living in the Stockton fairgrounds, some kind of engine gremlin because both times I've been there, I've had almost the same kind of issue going on with uh, electrical problems the first time with the engine cutting out and shutting off on me during the race. And then this last time with a real bad stumble and misfire in the corners that I thought felt like a fuel problem, a fuel delivery problem. But there was a couple other times on the front stretch and the back stretch too where I had a couple pops, like, like an ignition kind of cut out maybe like a coil or something going bad. And it didn't feel like a, a fuel problem at that point. And also the weird part was I pulled out the chip and I still was having chip symptoms on the higher RPM, it, uh, higher RPM range. So I'm not sure if I have a coil breaking down or um, maybe a bad distributor. I don't know. It could be either, either of the two, carburation or ignition. So hopefully I'll figure this thing out first step is to get this box back and um, freshened up from MSD. I heard that if you send it into them, they'll rebuild it for about 50 bucks. I'm not sure if that's still true. We're about to find out. I can't believe it'll only be 50 bucks to rebuild a $350 box, but um, we'll see. So hopefully it gets there soon and I get it back within a decent amount of time, get it in the car and then for my next race, I can figure out if that took care of it or not. Um, so. I'm getting a surgery done. I don't know if I told you guys before, but I'm getting a surgery done on my right knee in mid-January. So that'll probably put me out for a little while on working on the car and doing races and stuff. So um, until that point, I'm gonna start digging into the car. I did find a couple things wrong with it already. All right, y'all, finally made it in the shop. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the car. As you can see on this side, I already got flat tires. I told you guys those tires only hold for about a day. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and air up all the tires get them to where they need to be when I check everything and I'm gonna go ahead and measure uh, all my ride heights and um, All the other measurements I need to do to kind of give myself a little log about the race and how um, Everything went with the current setup that's in the car So I'm gonna do that and then uh, get it up on jacks after that and do a once over on everything see I know there's multiple things that are broken under the car so I'm gonna go ahead and and kind of get a, a feel of what all has to be replaced before the next race. Um, I want to kind of recap how the race went. I know you guys saw um, in the last video, <clears throat> that little video I did in Winter Circle kind of going over the race, but I didn't really get too much in detail on how the whole night went. Um, so I want to touch up on that. Uh, first off, I just want to give a uh, huge kudos to the Tri-State Pro Stock Bunch. Um, Roy is doing a fantastic job with that. They truly are making stock car racing out here on the West Coast great again. Um, really, co really cool to see how many cars showed up to that race, even though it is January. Uh, we had about 20 or 18 or 20 cars, something like that. So really cool to see that. And that's kind of how it was last year too, when they were doing their first year with the series. Um, a lot of cars showed up, so that's good. Um, the pay has been really good too. Um, around here, stock cars don't get get paid anything at all 
So the fact that each of these uh, tri-state pro stock races are at least $1,000 to win is amazing. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, behind the scenes there. I know Roy is really a big part of it, but um, I'm sure he's got so many people are, that are helping him uh, put the shows together. I know there's a lot of work involved with finding sponsors to come and um, you know, get the funding needed for all the races and stuff. So um, they're doing a great thing out here for the stock cars, and I'm really happy to see something like this finally has come up. So um, I also want to go ahead and thank Stockton, the dirt track of Stockton, for putting on a really nice show. I'm really starting to like that track. Um, and the facility there it seems like it's run pretty um, neat and kind of old-fashioned where they we got paid at the booth afterwards. That's really cool. So um, I really like how that's close to me also. It's just down the street. It's only about 40 minutes from my house. So um, it's kind of an easy drive as well. Um, but kind of going over how the race went, <clears throat> the car, we, uh, we're running the transponders on the car. And that's another thing I really am happy that they're doing now um, so we can see our lap times. My car turned 18.8. And the leader, Jesse Gonzalez, um, the guy who won, he turned to 18.1. We're talking about the feature race. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty far off on speed there. Um, going over the rest of the people that I was racing against, um, I was definitely not the second fastest car by any means. There were people turning um, 18.7s, 18.6s, 18.5s. Um, so I think when I went on the list, I was probably about the sixth or seventh fastest car on the track. Um, so I know I need to kind of up my game a little bit if I want to run with these guys. The only thing that really kind of sucks about um, running with the Tri-State is they're trying to get cars, which is really cool. You know, they, they want to have car count there, which is important, and that's what they're getting. But the problem is the rules, um, you know, they're so spread out over the board, and that's not really their fault. That's just the West Coast fault over here, California, Oregon, Nevada. Um, all these series or all these tracks that are making their different rules up and stuff. They're just so far away like um, I don't feel as bad getting second place when I know that the guy who are the guys who I'm running against are running 421s and 434 cubic inch motors in their car um, And I'm here stuck with you know the basically the California Petaluma Antioch rules where you can't really run anything over a 362 or, or 363 cubic inch motor um, so I know I'm down on power quite a bit. They can run alcohol, four bill carb. So I know they got quite a bit more horsepower than me and they also are running the 11 inch tires. The D55s I think is what a lot of guys are running. And um, you know, I'm still here on the eight inch dirt boss. So I know that a lot of the speed that I'm lacking is coming from there, but um, I also am 3,400 pounds. So the limit or the minimum weight is 3,000. So I know that if I can take 400 pounds out of the car, It'll definitely help me um, shave some tents off. So I'm going to work on that mostly this season, try to get this car lighter. Um, I'm going to, I have a Falcon transmission I'm going to put in it. I'm still running the Saginaw 3 speed, Old Faithful with a triple disc clutch. So that will save me some weight going to that. I think around 50 pounds going to that setup. And that's right on the mid plate there. And then I'm going to work on still taking some more weight off the front. I'm going to go to a different um, kind of front end setup and some lighter weight parts and stuff. So. That's what I'm gonna do, um, but overall, really fun night. Um, good racing, a good bunch of people, so looking forward to racing with these guys um, more often. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath the car and put this thing on time lapse for you guys. You guys hear that so here's issue number one left rear tire I'm not sure if you guys can see it too well but this rim is all bent out I can almost get my thumb in there um, third place guy was uh, getting into me a little bit I was losing power um, in the corners there, uh, having that problem with the engine stumbling and kind of cutting out power. So he was on my tail. 
I'd lose a little power and he'd come into me and tag me a little bit. So I'm surprised that tire didn't go down in the race. I didn't even know it was, um, it had that issue because I put on the trailer, I didn't notice any, anything weird with it. It wasn't making that noise. So, um, I got lucky. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little mini sledgehammer to it, fix it on up. All right, guys, here's another issue. That is my right rear shock that had broken off where it was mounted to from the rough track. What actually happened was this style of shock has a little nut on it, and luckily it didn't break off. It just completely unscrewed itself out of its heim down here. So luckily, something easy to fix the shock doesn't look broken anywhere else um i don't see it leaking or anything so i think i uh, lucked out there but that's just due to the rough tracks uh condition there at night i'm sure i'll find more there's a leak over there somewhere i'll get to it in a second all right so we've now moved our way over to the left rear and i can show you guys this leak here see all that wet fluid on the brake caliper well it looks like it's coming that's the pad right there and then up higher is uh, the piston the caliper piston and it looks like it's coming right out of the boot so this factory Ford nine inch caliper is bad so I have to get a new one go to the O'Reilly's or something I don't think they're that expensive just to get me by um, this is how I measure <clears throat> my rear steer um, and uh, all that good stuff back here I got an angle finder on the bars that's how I use the or that's how I find the angles that I'm running on my, my lower control arms and then this little nut that's tied to the string um, that's how I measure <clears throat> how, how far the rear end is from the chassis and then I can take both those measurements on both sides and uh, factor in rear steer. Um, but for the longest time, uh, I was making a mistake of measuring. Let me see if I can get this tape measure out here and show you guys how I used to measure it and how I did it wrong for so many years. Um, so I would, I would base it off of here, the chassis, and I'd, I used to measure it all the way up at a steep angle to wherever it contacted the the um, differential tube, the axle tube. And I figured if I did that on both sides, that um, the angle would be the same on both sides and I would get the correct measurement. The problem was I never realized that this side is actually down a little bit lower than the right side. And uh, depending on the angle, you won't find the center of the axle tube you might be a little bit farther back depending on how if you have a lot of steep angle on it or if you have a flatter angle you might be closer to the center or on center so <laughs> for the longest time i was doing it wrong i ended up just uh, dangling this string off there to try to find a true um vertical line to the the ground and now i just measure it uh at the flattest angle i can find you know i find wherever it's completely flat and that's how I measure it and that's the correct way to do it on this type of setup um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now all right guys I just got out from underneath the car. I was laying under it for a while, um, just kind of staring at the stars, <laughs> just um, kind of getting a once over and everything. Um, I found a couple more issues in the front here. Minor things, got a couple oil leaks, um, and I had 
used up the bumper a little bit apparently the front bumper i just put together so i got to push that back roll it back into place um and then i actually do have to lower the left front of the nose um this is just temporary you know i want to see how it's going to look and everything and i definitely do have to lower the left front it's sitting up too high um so that'll be an easy fix um and then i have to make a couple more supports for it and obviously make some body panels that'll fit it and make the lines look nice and then plenty of body work to do back here still and you guys saw the stuff in the back that was broken so i got my hands full as usual and um i'm not sure this may be my last video for a while may or may not be i'm not sure i'm having the my knee surgery done next week as you guys know so i will not be making any videos of working on the car for a while until i get better um but i may make a, a video or or not I'm not sure, but I may I may make a video about um, some other stuff going on in my life, um, racing or not related. So we'll see. If I get really bored, you know, I'll just do something and let you guys see what I'm doing. But anyway, so I'm gonna wrap this video up um, and see you guys next time. Go ahead and share this video, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Um, and we'll see you next time.